Hey everybody, I want to introduce you to Pastor James Foster. He is the pastor of Living Truth of Christ Church here in Lafayette. He got it started a number of years ago. He's the founding pastor and he's still the pastor, which is a testament to uh, the family of that church, still appreciating his ministry. Uh, they've had a lot of great things that have happened in the last number of years, but one of the things that I've seen from their church is that they're a church that is willing to step out in faith and trust God when they sense that he is leading. And so um, I've asked James to join us to talk about what it means to put God first. And so uh, James, let's start by, sure. um, tell us just a little bit about yourself first of all. Introduce yourself a little bit and then uh, we'll get into some questions for sure you. Sure thing, sure thing. James Foster and I'm married to uh, my wife. <clears throat> We've been married about uh, 40, 46, seven years, it'll be 47 years this year. And we have four daughters, all girls, and uh, the girls uh, flipped the script, and now we have four grandsons. <laughs> so <laughs> enjoying the four grandsons. I uh, grew up, both of us grew up in Geary, uh, came down to Lafayette uh, as an undergrad at Purdue University. After graduating from Purdue, I uh, decided to work for Purdue. So I worked at Purdue Calumet for a couple of years, came down to the main campus after that and uh, became an administrator for the residence halls. Uh, in the meantime, God calls me to, uh, to uh, preach the gospel. So I hung on to the Purdue job, accepted uh, the training, went to some seminary, uh, uh, seminary extensions and uh, began to learn some things about being a preacher of the gospel. And God used me to uh, be a preacher of the gospel for a couple of churches in town here before I was called a pastor. And so I've been pastoring since uh, the year 2000. But one key thing for me, Jeff, is God got my attention when I was 13 years old and uh. I was made the uh, assistant superintendent of Sunday school. And so <laughs> he, he had me studying his word since then. And so although I was working uh, that secular job at Purdue, uh, I just had gotten accustomed to being in God's word uh, steps of the way there. As You've well. always been engaged in some form of ministry since a long time ago. Long time. We won't ago. talk about numbers of years, but <laughs> okay. uh, it's been it's been a while. <laughs> now you've been in our church before on a Sunday morning. You've preached in our church before on a Sunday morning. Yes. You know as well as anybody else that there's a significant difference significant in difference. the way our two churches operate, and in fact, the way the the, the cultural expression of black churches versus traditionally culturally white churches have expressed themselves. So how about let's start off by you sharing with me and with our congregation, what does the word worship mean in your context? Uh, the first thought that comes to my mind when I think about what worship means in our culture, in our church, is uh, celebration, celebration of God. We celebrate God. And then I think of tradition because traditionally, I look back on the churches that I've uh, participated in, even as a youth and so forth. And traditionally, uh, we've celebrated God because our ancestors celebrated uh, deliverance from slavery. And so it just kind of connects with that in terms of, boy, who wouldn't celebrate a guy who can get people out of slavery sort of a thing? <laughs> and so uh, kind of from that. And then uh, with that, the cultural kinds of things that are there, the, the music, uh, the style, and, the, and there's a certain style of preaching that, that goes on and that sort of thing. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, understanding that the important thing is, boy, let, let's keep the focus on God as much as we can. Yeah, I, I think a lot, of, a lot of white guys don't understand that there's a wide variety of church expression in every culture, in the black, black church culture, in the white True. church culture. Even though there are white Baptists and white Presbyterians and white Pentecostals, there's a wide variety of that in the, in the black churches too. And I would label you as somewhat tame. Yes, I yes. can see why. I agree with that. I yeah. agree with that. <laughs> yes. So, so, so give us a little bit more explanation of what worship looks like in the African-American church more broadly. Sure, we're, we're, we're pretty spirited. Uh, when I say spirited, uh, boy, we're, we're okay with, with the drums, the tambourines, in terms of the, 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 uh, the music worship and that sort of thing. And so we're pretty spirited there. And then uh, people can get loud, and so people get energetic and loud and emotional and that sort of thing. And a lot of preachers uh, preach from a certain level of emotion, certain parts of the, the message that they bring in that sort of thing. So uh, from a uh, cultural perspective, uh, that, that strong 
a high level expression is, is just part of what, what happens there. And people feel at home with that. And there I've had, I've had people give me feedback. If they don't see it, they don't feel it. They don't sense it. Uh, they haven't had church. And so we get, uh, we, we get that feedback and we see what people are ex- looking for and experiencing there. So to me, uh, knowing that we're not to be people pleasers at the same time, we still want people to feel comfortable in God's house of worship. And so that's in a lot of my church experience, worship is the thing that you do before the message starts. And worship is the music that someone on stage is doing some singing, or maybe a small group of people on stage are doing some singing. And the people in the congregation, depending on the church, um, are either singing along or they're watching. That brings to mind participation. We're looking for people to participate. Pe- people are accustomed to participating with who's ever singing. And if a preacher's preaching, they're partic- giving him amens and you preach a brother and those kinds of things. And so there's that participation uh, that we're accustomed to in our culture in terms of the congregation and what goes on in the church there. And uh, again, the emotion can come out because some people can get up and jump and dance and run the aisles in some churches and that sort of thing. So that participation is kind of important to people. So worship for you includes um, celebration, it includes music, it includes um, spirited music, drums, um, (laughs) people dancing, people jumping up and down, maybe sometimes yelling an amen here or there or more. Yes. Um, But also throughout the message. Yes. There's uh, participation all the way through the message. So worship for you means all those things, right? All those things. But... That's all pre-2020. What did, what did it look like this last year for you? What did worship look and feel like? Completely different, completely different because we focus on live streaming. And so since we're focused on live streaming, uh, what we're doing right now is I and the praise team are the ones at the church building. In October, we came from the shut-in point of view to live stream at the church. Demetrius does the welcome, and I do a few announcements before we do uh, a communion. One of the things that we don't do that I'm looking forward to getting back to when I know that we're not going to get back to everything we did in 2019, but one of the things that we were doing in 2019 was uh, having a portion of the service where people would express thanksgiving. Mm. And so I wanted people to, hey, you come meet God at the door with thanksgiving before we go into the courts with praise and so we give people a chance to tell us what you're thankful for what things you're thankful for and don't say don't just stick to the material stuff give give us some way god how god is is changing things in your life and that sort of thing as so, part of the gathering people would just you'd ask them to stand up give them the microphone let them talk for a bit exactly exactly so that's part of the gathering that was part of the front end of the gathering too because i picture people once they do that then they're a little bit more involved in worshiping yeah <laughs> in, in terms of the worship uh, Sunday morning worship that goes on there too. When we first got back and when we yeah when we first back in the building in October, we had about 20 people the first Sunday, about 15 people the next Sunday, and the numbers continued to dwindle. And now we're down to just a handful of people come once in a while, and so everybody d- does not come all the time. Mm-hmm. So that sounds incredibly different from 2019. Incredibly much different. less participatory. Um, it sounds like celebration might even be difficult. Um, almost zero interaction with the preacher. Almost zero. Yeah. 